Hi, I'm Natalie DeQuilfelt. And I'm Ya Asari. We are third year internal medicine primary care residents at the University of Colorado and ambassadors for an online med ed platform called Teach I Am. We take the prep work out of teaching with readily available scripts, interactive PowerPoints, and handouts. Our goal is to create teachable content that is easily accessible online. Today, we'll be teaching you how to prescribe medications for abortion in the first trimester. With the passage of the Dobbs decision in June of 2022, hundreds of thousands of people with uteruses lost vital access to reproductive health care. This challenged OBGYN and family medicine providers to find ways to prescribe medication and procedural abortion to their patients while also protecting their medical licenses. Lack of access to abortion disproportionately impacts people of color and those of lower socioeconomic status. As internal medicine providers, adults with uteruses account for 50% of the patients we treat. By learning how to prescribe just two medications, we can respond to the urgent need to help patients retain autonomy over their bodies and join the fight for reproductive justice alongside our colleagues. Let's get right to the steps to take when a patient presents for an elective abortion. Prior to prescribing these medications, please be aware that each state has unique waiting periods and restrictions. Step one is to confirm pregnancy with a urine HCG and calculate gestational age based on last menstrual period. Ultrasound is not needed except where the last period is unknown or if we suspect ectopic pregnancy. The key is that we want to make sure they're less than 11 weeks gestation. Next, we choose a medication regimen with the combination of mifepristone and misoprostol being preferred. We then review the patient's medical history to assess for contraindications as listed here and do an informed consent process. Be sure that at least one provider at your practice has signed the prescriber agreement which is available in our supplemental materials. If the patient has no contraindications and mifepristone is available, they are instructed to take one oral dose of mifepristone 200 milligrams in clinic or at home. 24 to 48 hours later, they will take misoprostol 800 milligrams, which consists of four tablets. This can be taken buccally or vaginally. If their gestational age is nine to 11 weeks, they should take a second dose of misoprostol 800 milligrams six hours after the first. If mifepristone is not available, an alternative, the less efficacious method, is to take misoprostol 800 milligrams every three hours for a total of three doses. You may also wish to prescribe antiemetics and NSAIDs for pain. According to 2020 practice guidelines from the National Abortion Federation, Follow-up should be offered within 14 days, though patients may opt for self-assessment. If they have ongoing symptoms of pregnancy one to two weeks after the abortion, such as breast tenderness and morning sickness, have ongoing bleeding, or they have not passed clots, they should be referred to gynecology for further evaluation. Alternatively, the patient could repeat a urine pregnancy test at home or in clinic after four weeks have passed with referral to gynecology if it's positive. Expected side effects are severe cramping and bleeding that are heavier than menses, fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Complications include incomplete abortion, which is higher after eight weeks gestation and when misoprostol is used alone. Other rare complications include prolonged heavy bleeding, and intrauterine infection. See our supplementary materials for patient handouts, including instructions on how to take the medications, lists of side effects, and frequently asked questions. The following case demonstrates the core principles we discussed. A 30-year-old transgender man presents to clinic after a missed period. Their last menstrual period was six weeks ago, and they are not on hormonal contraception. Our first step is to confirm pregnancy and estimate gestational age, which would be six weeks, based on their LMP. After counseling them on pregnancy options, I would take a moment 
to visit the Guttmacher Institute's website to assess whether there are any restrictions or waiting periods in my state. In this case, there are no waiting periods and the patient decides to proceed with medication abortion. Next, I would assess for the presence of any contraindications. Here are a list of conditions or scenarios that would increase risk for ectopic pregnancy and indicate need for an ultrasound. As part of informed consent, I would review the expected side effects and potential complications. I would give them a handout containing return precautions such as for heavy bleeding through two pads per hour for two consecutive hours. In this case, I would strongly recommend they go to the emergency room. In case two, a 21-year-old woman with lupus on chronic low-dose prednisone comes in for contraception counseling. Here is a list of medical conditions that are associated with a higher risk for adverse events in pregnancy. She is interested in the copper IUD, so our first step is a pregnancy test. Hers is positive, and she wishes to pursue medication abortion. She is unsure of her last menstrual period, so ultrasound is necessary in this case, which demonstrates an estimated gestational age of nine weeks. Due to her corticosteroid use, mifepristone is contraindicated, so we prescribe misoprostol alone. A commonly asked question is whether RH testing is needed. She does not require RH testing prior to abortion as there is low risk for maternal fetal blood mixing. As part of the informed consent process, we review the decreased efficacy of misoprostol alone compared with the combination of mifepristone with misoprostol and the fact that risk of incomplete abortion is higher in her case as she approaches 10 weeks. During follow-up, she continues to have symptoms of ongoing pregnancy. Therefore, we would refer her to OBGYN. In summary, the steps to take prior to prescribing medication abortion are to confirm pregnancy, estimate gestational age, choose a medication regimen, rule out contraindications, and informed consent. Medication abortion can be considered in pregnancies up to 11 weeks gestation, and the combination of mifepristone and misoprostol is more effective than misoprostol alone. In some states, patients must wait one to two days after counseling to receive the prescription, so be aware of local laws. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you feel equipped and empowered to provide abortion to your patients.